Good morning to everyone. Salam alaikum. Uh, let me start by uh, expressing my deep condolences to Indonesia uh, for the tragic uh, uh, air accident yesterday. It's killed so many people, including people I understand from the Minister of Environment and the Minister of Finance, so that many people have also lost people to their friends and colleagues of all of them. So, uh, let's pray uh, for the victims and let's uh, support the families who are most very, 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 very well. So it's a day of sadness and uh, it's such a well, big tension in also life. In terms of that day, which otherwise would be a day for your joy, those who are ready to celebrate a huge event, not for just for Indonesia, but for the world. This is the opening of the Secretary for the International Tropical Heatlands Center. This is that they have been waiting for for long. You can see it here, and a lot of people in the ministry here has worked very, very hard for this to happen. So I am really, really glad, even under the bad circumstances yesterday, that we can be here with you and to celebrate this opening. This center gave so much promise for the world. I think we can achieve so much for Indonesia, for the Congos, uh, and for the world. Uh, so let's uh, also be happy uh, and feel your joy in this uh, opening. Uh, interesting enough, on that few years back, very few people spoke about tea tanks. I cannot recall the icon into the climate con uh, conversation, basically in Bali in 2007, which was the first climate, big climate meeting I attended. Very well hosted at the time in Bali. No one has even spoke about the events. Uh, and it was very little understanding of how important these ecosystems are. So, from this very kind of poor start into the present situation, where there is a gradually global recognition of the importance of the events, that come a long way. But a lot more need to be done. And that we be that we must start for the environment which should fall uh, a drastic increase in the mapping of the peatlands and in the scientific work we need to do to understand the peatlands. These are some of the most beautiful, some of the most uh, important ecosystems and both for uh, biodiversity as well as for climate, absolutely critical for the planet. We need to understand them better and to map them better and we support this effort in, in cooperation with the peatlands center here many universities and scientific environments all over the planet. Secondly, we need to step back the conservation of the peatlands uh, and their south-south cooperation bears a lot of promise. It was stated that a big Indonesian delegation to Brazzaville, which is the capital of the Republic of Congo, beautifully located at the Congo River, and they made a Brazzaville declaration with Minister Arlet, Minister Arlet, uh, Sudan and Law is one of the most dynamic environment ministries in Africa. So happy to be uh, your friend and colleague. And we have a of So here we have one of the strongest environment ministries in Asia, one of the strongest environment ministries in, in, in Africa, Ibu City and uh, Alex Sudan and Law coming together uh, in South South Cooperation. Indonesia. Exactly what we want to see. Sometimes when people speak about South South Cooperation, speak as if, as if South South Cooperation is synonymous with China. It's not. You see Indonesia doing South South Cooperation, you see India doing South South Cooperation, you see a number of Latin American nations, Chile, Brazil doing South South Cooperation. There is so much to be achieved by comparing roles between different nations in the South. Many of them in superior experiences so many things. So thank you so much to Indonesia for sharing your experience with the Congos. But in every turn that the Congos will also share their experience with Indonesia. So this is a true exercise for mutual mutual learning. And as we know, the peatlands which very recently was discovered in the Congos, the biggest in the world, the enormous carbon store there is similar to 20 years of the uh, emissions from the United States of America or three years of global emissions, it is going to be uh, emitted into, into the air. 
So most of the the stock, we do not have them, uh, and so important for, for climate and, and also to buy the others. If you want peatlands to be conserved, you need to make the economic case for the peatlands added to the environmental case. Absolutely critical if you want to stop global warming. Peatlands are also very essential for many species, but they also have a huge economic promise which you need to set up. And then set up two main areas where we can assist uh, the peatlands nation in, in, in setting up the economic case. One is obvious, which is tourism. These are ex extremely interesting, fascinating ecosystems, and some of them also have uh, a wide variety of species which people want to come and see. In Rwanda, as I've told some of in, in the past, in Rwanda they are now charging $1,500 for one person, for one hour, to see the gorillas. Meaning that if you bring a family of four to see the gorillas in the online, it costs you six thousand dollars for one hour. But as everyone understands, it creates a fantastic economy. Taxi drivers, tourists, guide, tourists, uh, uh, people working in the hotels, the local community, and it creates opportunity for health and education and better living for the people in the neighborhood. And that's what we should aim at, also help in, in, in Indonesia. It was, just, it was just discovered that there is a new separate species of orangutans in the Sumatras, in northern Sumatra. These species need to be protected, and that's very, very important for biodiversity. That is also a huge economic opportunity for Indonesia to create tourism to see such a, a rare animal. And exactly the same in the Congos, they have a, have a number of primates, big apes. It can be turned into an economic opportunity for tourism. And we will be happy to share best practice from Botswana, from Rwanda, or from other nations that turn uh, the animals into a fantastic opportunity for tourism. The other area where you can see huge economic opportunities coming from the land is the post agriculture. That's why you are the one supported here in Indonesia, the Tropical Landscapes Finance Facility which has the one aim of increasing the productivity of the small-scale farmer. At present, some small-scale farmers do just 1.5 uh, tons of, of palm oil from, from, uh, from, the, from the acre. Uh, that can be increased to six. Uh, I just spoke to Paul Wood, the minister. He said it may be increased to nine tons. So it's an enormous potential opportunity to increase the productivity, and if you can, uh, if you can four even six double the productivity from the same land, because the farmers will do much better, much better income, much better health, much better education, much better everything, and much less incentives to go and destroy the forest or the tree plants. So these are two huge economic opportunities for the nations with tree plants to move into tourism and to move into better agricultural practices which can get more out of the land which is already degraded and more easy to go into the, uh, the uh, virgin uh, 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 land. So, then, uh, at the end, again, thank Ghana to Indonesia, my great friend Ivo Sikli, thank you. And also thank uh, uh, Alex Zanonov for coming all the way from Brazil and also the delegation from the Democratic Republic of Congo coming here. There is so much promise in this day. For the first time, we have a global center for peatlands, which can be the kind of the core of the global work for peatlands. And we are going to do our utmost to support the center, to support Indonesia, and to support the two Congos. Again, thank you for joining us this morning.